it's not often in chess that one comes across a true brilliancy that is pretty much unseen. But I think to Pollock versus Ort from 1907 qualifies. This correspondence game contains scintillating variations and a model demonstration of the kind of attack you can launch against a king that remains for too long in the center of the board. This gem, found buried deep within the annals of the Mega Correspondence Database, is my number six best chess game of the 1900s. To Pollock has the white pieces and opens the game with pawn to e4. We get e5, knight f3, and knight to f6, the Petrov defense. Now, this is not known for swashbuckling chess, but we will see that in this game. Knight takes e5, of course, you all know that you can't capture on e4 because of queen e2, and if the knight falls back, there is knight c6 check. Yes, I realize you can be clever, and in this position you can play queen e7, and you're not lost, but your position still sucks, so don't do that either. So, in the game, we see the correct move, pawn to d6, the knight falls back, knight to f3, knight takes e4, and pawn d4. We're getting a symmetrical position. Of course, in symmetrical positions, things can peter out, can end up kind of drawish, but on the other hand, white has an extra tempo, and that can lead to a very dangerous attack if things develop in that way. Bishop d3, knight to c6, castles, bishop e7, even though this game was played in 1907, uh, it's still following pretty standard theory. The moves are not the best moves. There are some improvements recommended, but they are still following theoretical play that's been played hundreds of times. C4, bishop to g4, pinning the knight, knight c3, trying to put pressure on the structure here. Black has kept the knight on e4, which could be strong, but it can also lose time. In fact, white seems to have a good advantage here. Knight f6, pawn takes d5, and knight takes d5. In this position, white has scored pretty well, and the theoretical move is rook to e1 with a number of games, and again, white doing pretty well. In this game, though, Tupalik tries bishop to e4, which is a very direct move with some dangerous attacking ideas. If black plays correctly, this move is neutralized, and it's really not going to be, you know, well thought of by theory. But that requires correct play. This is 1907. You don't have engines in correspondence chess that guarantee correct play. So after bishop e4, we see knight back to f6 and pawn to d5. One king is castled, the other king is not, and white is trying to catch the uncastled king in the center of the board. Knight takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3. Simple tactic, a never again kind of tactic. You can't take on d5 because of knight f6 check. And the queen falls on d5, thanks to this uh, open discovery. So after queen takes f3, knight d4 in this position. And there are some problems on the white side, but there's also a problem on the black side. White plays courageously here, queen h5. And black in this position should just castle, just castle, just castle. Just castle. It's a great motto to have in chess. It will save you many potentially lost points. And in this position, you know, normal moves for white should lead to a roughly balanced position. White has no reason once the king is castled to expect to really be better here. Um, and, you know, maybe a draw, maybe someone makes a mistake, anything can happen. But instead, black keeps the king in the center for a little longer with queen to d7 here. And now white plays queen to e5, a very, very scary move to meet with direct threats. The knight is under attack, and there's a tempting idea. The knight can go after the rook here, which is what happens. The computer recommends knight to e2 check. Knight f5 is a little safer alternative that's probably a little better for white. And I have to say, even though the computer says this is totally fine, uh, here, because you castle, again, always castle, great motto, I would be very nervous here that this knight is getting trapped. Even though the computer says it's fine, the computer can calculate way better than I can, and I would be worried about the knight getting trapped. Uh, you know, you can, though, play like f5 here or a rook to e8, and the computer says basically equal, so I'm not going to distrust it. It's really good at chess. Instead, though, after queen e5, we see knight c2, kind of a greedy move, but also a move that feels like it should be right. I mean, one king is castled, the other king is not, but how many pieces are really developed here? Are you going to get to this king with the relatively limited attacking force you have? Turns out, yes. 
Yes, you are. White plays bishop g5, sacrificing the rook on a1, and it is going to be a full rook sacrifice, not a piddling little exchange sacrifice, because white is not going to be taking time out to pick that knight back up after it takes the rook. Black's hand at this point is forced, because everything is collapsing if you don't get greedy. you got to have something for your suffering. So, knight takes a1. And I said, we're not taking back over here. Like if we take back, then the king can move. And at that point, white is just worse. Uh, you just get out of the pin. White has not enough to show for the sacrificed exchange. But we're not capturing the knight. Rook c1. And honestly, it's kind of incredible to me that there is no defense here. But it seems like there's no defense here. It seems like white is pretty much winning or very, very close to it. The idea of rook takes c7 is obviously just a thumping, devastating move. Um, and it might seem here like you could try some tactics to get out of it, you know, by castling in either direction, but neither direction actually works. If you castle over here, now, you can't actually take here, which seems like, oh, I'm going to win this. That's great. First off, it may not be enough to win that, but you also have back rank issues to worry about. So queen a4 and black is black is doing totally fine uh, in this position. In fact, you have to play knight c3 not to lose. So instead of taking on c7, you would take on e7, and black might think, hey, I'm pinning this. I can get material back. I've still got the knight in the corner. No such luck. Knight f6 check, more beautiful ideas. And this is either winning the queen, what a huge fork hitting everything, or you're forcing mate. Pawn takes queen g3 check, king over. And this is a very, very nice checkmate. Not too complex, but very nice. So backing up after rook c1, you could also consider the castle queenside option here which does add more defense to the c7 pawn. But now after bishop takes e7, here black could try to resist, although white is much better. f6 is the best move. Maybe this is even the best way to play for black. Um, but after f6 and the queen goes to e6, you don't have a chance uh, to get your knight out, and you also don't have a chance to kind of trap the bishop, which you could try to do with rook e8, but then knight d6 check. You're all pinned up. Also, pawn d6 is really good, and white is just doing great. Take on e8, push pawn d6, it's winning for white. So, <laughs> in this position with the attack on c7, you're not able to castle in either direction because of different attractive variations, and knight hops to either f6 or to d6. You also um, can't try to passively defend with the rook um, in this position, there are actually multiple moves, pawn d6, <laughs> even bishop f6, which the computer points out. And the simplest seems to be queen takes g7 right here. Uh, and if rook f8, oh, this king is so trapped. Here you have knight f6 check. And if bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, and you just patiently do this. Everything is so pretty and so crushing for white. And these are just some variations. There are other variations that are also quite pretty and quite crushing. So after rook c1, I'm sure black was, you know, desperate to play one of these other variations. They don't work. So king to d8 is played. And it, it is the best try. We unpin, right? So, you know, now we can move this bishop. We can trade here. And our king helps defend c7. Or it seems to, the move played is rook takes c7. The king is trying to defend c7, but not able because of this crushing shot. So after queen takes c7, which is forced here, white is down two rooks, right? And we're not getting this knight back anymore. We can really kind of write that off. So this rook <laughs> and this rook uh, in black's camp, we have two minor pieces and a queen. Uh, we are about to win one minor piece back, but it does not a lot of attacking power left on the board, yet it is enough. So after queen takes c7, pawn d6, a very pretty queen and bishop fork taking advantage of the pin on the bishop on e7. So we are winning a minor piece back. Note that here and in many other lines, 
The geometry is just working perfectly because you don't have queen c1, which would be checkmate, except that our bishop controls this line. Very fortunate. Fortunate or well structured by white. Got to give white credit. So in this position, the queen needs to move. And of course, queen takes e7 is on the agenda. Where does the queen move? Well, it turns out no move saves the game, but the move played is maybe a little bit easier for white to defeat. That's the move queen d7, which we'll see. But queen c6 took some time for the engine to figure out how to defeat. It seemed like black was going to put up a really strong resistance here, but there is an incredible, insane, dirty engine line here. Starts with queen captures on e7 check, the best capture, king over to c8, <clears throat> and in this position, Knight c5, and honestly, let's upgrade this to brilliant. A really incredible move. Now, the simple tactic is if queen takes c5, d7 check is a discovery and you're picking up the queen, um, actually you're forcing mate. You're not even gonna take time to capture the queen. You're just gonna force checkmate. But you see the tactic. However, after knight c5, what if black doesn't take the knight? There is the idea of pawn to d7 check. And that's a huge idea in the position, d7 check, and then d8 equals queen can force mate. But what if black plays a move like pawn to a6? Well, there is only one winning move here, a single winning move. And if you really want to give yourself a headache and still probably not find the right move, you can think about this one and try and find it. Turns out it's pawn to b4. And you're almost in a position where black is in zugzwang. The idea of d7 check remains and is gaining in strength. But what happens if black just ignores everything and tries to move the knight? Knight c2 says, I'll just bring the knight back. Maybe I capture over here. d7 check is not winning the game right here because I will go and hide. You can't win the game, you can only get some material back and you sacrificed so much. You don't win the game with d7 check. That much is true. But after knight c2, the only winning move again, and totally crushing, is b5, b4, b5. You're down the, these rooks that you sacrificed, and this just wins. It just wins. It's insane. Why is this move any good at all? Okay, yeah, the queen can't take. We get that because of queen c7 right? Checkmate. But after pawn takes b5, what's the point? All you've done is open this rook right here, right? Why did you do this? Well, the answer is d7 check. King over to b8, d8 queen, rook takes d8, queen takes d8, and I told you that pushing d7 through wasn't enough because black gives up the rook and we're still down material in this position. But... Now, in this position, that the A file is open, it is enough. King A7, queen to A5 check. The queen can't block because you can capture here. So king over to B8 and bishop to F4 check. And this is going to be mate. Insane. Insane computer line. The fact that you have to find b4 and b5 and that wins and black can't do anything in the time that you're doing that is absolutely bonkers. There's so much going on here. I can't cover all of it. The one other line I do want to cover is after b4, what happens if instead of the knight c2 line that we gave and the b5 threat is the big threat, but what happens if instead of knight c2, you try just king b8 and you just run for it? Well, here you have knight d7 check and uh, you can't go this way because the king is just getting mowed down on the dark squares. So knight d7 check, king over to c8, and here knight f8. Beautiful move. Another one. I'm going to throw in another brilliant uh, annotation, and I think it's totally deserved. This threatens mate because you are cutting off the, uh, the rook that is defending the back rank here. If rook takes in this position, queen takes, you have to go king d7. And here you have queen e7 check and you do get to d8. So after knight f8, let's say you try to hide king to b8. Then you have queen d8 check because your knight is giving you control of the eighth rank. King a7. 
bishop to e3 check and b6 forced if you're not giving up the queen which doesn't help anyway queen e7 check king b8 and here you have various ways to win but d7 and d8 just butchering the king incredible 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 i love all these variations in the game things finish a little bit more simply but still very prettily queen to d7 is played which seems more natural than queen c6 i think because you're staying on the second rank which seems so critical to defend you're holding a few more squares but after queen d7 bishop takes e7 check king e8 doesn't help because of queen takes g7 and ouch and ouch, <laughs> there's huge threats, two threats of checkmate. So the king tries to go to c8, but now knight c5. So a similar idea, the construction with all the pieces on e7 and c5, here we're gaining time hitting the queen, and you can't go to c6 in this position because then you give up this diagonal queen check, king over to b8, knight d7 check, and after king c8, there's just knight e5 check, and you win the queen with this discovery. So after knight c5, the queen tries queen g4. So hoping uh, to keep this diagonal under control so we don't allow that devastating queen f5 check. But in this position, there is a way to attack on a different diagonal and defend the mate in one that black is threatening, or mate in two. And that is queen d5. Excellent. Mate covered. And how do you defend b7? The answer is you don't. This is totally over. Uh, d7 check is coming if you try something like queen b4, and if rook b8, still d7 check, and you just mate queen d6, right? So it is just totally over after queen d5. Only try, as played in the game, is queen d7 saying, all right, have the queen, but now white is doing well on material uh, and still has the attack. Right? So we just cash in now. Knight takes d7, king takes d7. There are many ways to finish, but white picks queen f5 check, king c6, pawn b4, looking for this. Pawn to a6, queen c5, king d7, queen c7 check, king e6, and pawn d7. <laughs> Total control of the seventh rank with the diagonal pieces. Normally you like to occupy the seventh rank with your rooks, you know, but here the diagonal pieces control the seventh rank. And there's no way to stop just this move right here. Also, you have ideas like queen d6 before you push through. And of course, if the king takes, this comes with discovered check. So, ouch, 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 ouch. And after pawn d7, black resigned. I hope you've enjoyed this game that you, like me, find it to be a truly brilliant hidden gem. I'd love to know more about this game. There, I only have the basic information that is in the Mega Correspondence Database. It's played in Czechoslovakia Correspondence Game from 1907. What a masterpiece. If you want to see more incredible games from the 1900s, including some more Correspondence Games coming up that you probably haven't seen, then click on the playlist that is popping up on your screen.